billion ink print cartridges must have went empty, so their stories never got printed. I'm sure that was never the intent. All we know is she'd been running around the block, arms wrapped around the neighborhood sweetheart, and she's some militant dyke with gold-plated teeth. And now her blood-stained baggy pants sag six feet below the earth's waistline, 24 bullets to the back. And all the blood, all cleaned up before the photos made it to the internet? Mm. I'm sure there must have been witnesses that witnessed her transition of spirit. Bystanders who took out their phones with uncharged batteries, couldn't capture the beaten, no room for recordings, too many selfies. A hurried woman, busy ordering deli sandwiches for a corporate party. I think that day Kim Kardashian's ass broke the internet. Sure how she not crashed the web by poking at the ghost of Sarah Barkin, the outrage of the black community would have straight blacked out social media. I think that day I was having a solo ceremony, saying to myself, Melissa Williams, Sakia Gunn, Kendra Chapman, Crystal Jackson, Ashe, Ashe. But no one in black bodies were partaking in libation. Mourning the fallen queer bodies by police girls and visual aunties popping shots in back shoulders. I think that day, all ears must have went deaf. God must have pressed mute on everybody's mouth so all the crying chorus well and please don't shoot went unheard. Nobody heard the cat calling on corners by men dying to penetrate butch bodies to show them what they've been missing. Big fists to women's mouths with sounds of, you want to look like a man, I will treat you like a man, when unheard. I'm sure how tanks been filled, printers been printing, phones been working, feet been running to scene, and God would have not been playing God, the world would have been in awe and outraged by the deliberate erasure of black bush bodies. And their stories would have been heard. So much. Hey.
ourselves We'll have great, great feelings
tall and erect when he walked Pan's class through whites only areas. Anglo pavements with 17 year old leaves tucked pinky hair underneath baseball caps and oversized black hoodies. A place where I learned to negate my blackness, as if I could be read as anything other than black in their eyes. And since white blonde girls were my unsung reflections and mirrors, I figured being loved by one would at least get me closer to the whiteness that were written on my own skin. Mm -hmm. On the first time she introduced me to her father, Daddy, this is my girlfriend. His blue eyes bucked wide, flashing words that read whites only. Segregation split his mouth wide open, and I could hear the jump Jim Crow with his baritone as he cleared the build up in the back of his throat. His eyes held that same gawking, same spit to face disgust of generations that came before him, who too would have disapproved of his daughter's love for a Negro girl. Would have wedged borders between our bodies with my seven limbs. As a reminder of the strange fruit that comes of fancying America's emblem of innocent security. And I watched his daughter, my partner, scurry to pick up his disapproval off the ground and she lists off reasons as to why I wasn't like all the other black kids they must have talked about during family dinners. <laughs> Daddy, she writes poetry and she dances. She may even show you some of her moves. This will be the first time I recognize this body to not be body at all, to be flesh to be object, a product, a package, a marionette dangling upon her finger, showing me off to her daddy as if my blackness needed an explanation, an asterisk that read, white, friendly, special, talented, not a thug, trained, except the word ring around during Christmas time, that non-threatening kind of blackness that was like nothing. The rhetoric of 1865 insidiously familiar to her own tongue, so suddenly, her voice broke from the sound of suburban blonde to auction block auctioneer. Y'all, this nigga writes poetry and she dances. Show them your moves, nigga. So the ground below me shakes thunderously. The warm wooden floor between my feet turned warm with a plate, a platform, a block, and my limbs are moving. So suddenly digging, so diving, so feet shoved into an unsung gospel. A whole audience now of white relatives, of Livermore, of Pleasanton, of San Ramon, of Santa Cruz. My shirt flies upwards, exposing the sort of bright, ready breast, bearing the sweetest milk her father ever longed for. So, flesh bends over forward, all black crescent moon ass, I'll call it a cup holder. So, I in the past, is it true black women have a large clitoris says, hell, there's only one way to find out. So, Daddy, she writes poetry and she dances. She may even show you some of her moves. Her daddy's formerly gritted teeth turned pleased, erecting the most carnivorous smile of flesh I've ever seen. It'd be years later till I ever stop dancing, because to be a black girl displaced in the suburbs is to want nothing more than to disappear. And my God, those white folks had such a way of making me feel like I was the most <coughs> exceptional, jigaboo dancing, special black girl they ever did see. <laughs> <laughs> Bucket seat, sit upright, slump for a shift. We find safety 